and there's no higher power today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for waking us up. Father, we thank you for being closed in our right mind. Thank you for the use and activities of our limbs today. We thank you this morning, Father, for all <clears throat> you've done for us. You've done great and mighty things. Hallelujah. You've made waves where there is no wave. Every time we turn around, God, you keep on blessing us. Lord, you said that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings we don't have room enough to receive. And, God, we thank you for the pouring out of your blessings. We thank you for being able to give to others. Father, we thank you for being an inspiration and an encouragement to others today. We know you love your people. And, Father, we know that your desire is for us to love one another and to bless each other. And, God, we thank you for giving us this opportunity. We thank you for the gift of giving, the gift of love this morning. And we're grateful unto you. We appreciate you today, Almighty God. And, Father, we love you this day because it was you who first loved us. You so loved us, you sent your only begotten Son. The Lord, if we can just believe, if we can just open up our faith unto you, God, we won't perish, but we have everlasting life because we realize this morning you went back to prepare a place for us that where you are one day we may be also. Father, you made great promises and you're God who fulfill your promises. You're God who don't lie. You're not a man that you should lie. And, Father, we thank you for your spirit this morning. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for sanctifying us. Father, we thank you for your gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for leading us into all truth. We thank you this morning that you have nothing ill for us. But, Lord, you want to bless us as your people. You want us to be right before you. You want what's good for us today. And we're grateful unto you this morning. Father, we come asking for forgiveness of all our sins and wrongdoings, our wrong thoughts, our wrong speakings, and our wrong feelings. And though our sins be as scarlet this morning, we ask that you would wash us as white as snow. Cleanse us this morning from all unrighteousness. And give us a clean heart, O oh God. And renew the right spirit within us. Father, we ask this this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, whatever it is that's keeping us separated, whatever it is, God, that we're doing that's not pleasing and acceptable unto you, we ask this morning that when it comes back around, it won't find us here. But Father, we've moved on in you. The house has been swept clean. And your spirit is living in us now. And our desire is to do what's pleasing and acceptable unto you daily and to walk upright before man. Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. And we thank you this morning for forgiveness. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and yet meeting our needs. We thank you for being on our side today in spite of ourselves. We're truly grateful unto you this morning. Thank you for putting our sins as far as the east is from the west and never to remember them again. Father, thank you this morning. We bring every call and every listener before you. And, Lord, the very desires of their hearts today, God, I ask that you would move upon it in a mighty way. Lord, whatever they stand in the need of this morning, many can't pay bills and many desire things. We are in the season of celebration of your birth. Lord, I ask this morning that you would open doors and make ways all for the sake of your people today, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask this morning that you would bless America and the leadership of America. God, we ask that you would bring us back to you wholeheartedly, bow down, God, in lowliness and humbleness unto you, and return us unto you today in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we ask that you would continue to give us a chance to get it right. And, Lord, we thank you this morning. We bring the sick before you, those that are incarcerated in their families. God, we bring those that are in the military and every blog talk host is teaching and preaching Jesus. And, Father, we bring this segment of Jesus in the morning to you. 
and we ask that you would bless today as only you can do. Heal the sick, fix situations this morning. All we ask you to do it, God. But, Lord, if you do it, we know it's complete in the name of Jesus. And it won't add no sorrow. God, it won't break down, but it will remain strong. Do it for your glory today and let your people come out with the testimony. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Then hallelujah. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for never leaving us, not forsaking us. Thank you for your healing power today. We thank you that we're always on your heart. And that, God, you fix situations. Oh, you bless your people. I thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, His Majesty. We thank you for your word today. For your word is a lamp unto our feet. Father, it's a light unto our path. Forever, O oh God, that word is settled in heaven. And we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We can't say thank you enough. Oh, you've been good to us. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing right now, and what you're going to do. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Oh, we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. For there's none like thee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you today. The songwriter said, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. The heavens and earth adore him. What a mighty God. We serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And the thing with him is this if you reach out to him right now, he will reach back out to you. I don't care what the situation is, I don't care where it's at, I don't care what time it is. If you will reach out to him, he will reach back to you. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a great God, and he's on our side. And he keeps showing himself over and over again. And he keeps showing me I'm here to bless you if you're willing to be blessed. I'm here to be yours if you want me. Hey, that's nothing too hard for me to do. And I'm just grateful this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to one more song of the morning. And when we come back, we'll come back with our morning scripture reading. I truly understand what people may say. They believe to think how we think is far from okay. But I believe it's never okay to abandon your dreams. And it just so happens that our dream is to lift up a holy king. See, this is my life, my choice, and I choose to lift up my hands. And please don't be alarmed if when the music comes on, I begin to dance. And run across the room until I can barely catch my breath. And fall on the floor because I gave it all and have nothing left. See, I'm going to worship until I pass out. See, I came to worship. shackles and being set free see i may look like money but you don't know what i've been through and i'm still going through some of it so dancing is something that i gotta do see, jesus was the only one that saved my soul he took 
good chance on this broken hearted man Grabbed my hand and he made me whole Yeah, see Jesus was the only one Who saved my soul
property and that kind of thing, or he's knowing some information about it and he's willing uh, to share it with us. And I wanted to bring him so we can talk about that and maybe be a blessing to somebody and uh, give out some good, wholesome information here today. So just whenever you're ready, just call in and press that number one, and uh, I'll see your number. I think your area code is 202, if I'm not mistaken. So if you have a 202 area code, let me know, and uh, when I see it, I will bring you right in. Good morning, Adoptable. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Good to see you today. So that's uh, our topics and the things we want to talk about this morning. But he's in now, so I'm going to bring him right in. Good morning, Mr. Davis. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Mac. I'm, I'm doing fine this morning. That's good. That's good. Listen, I... Um, Wanted to turn the floor over to you and give you an opportunity to share with us today because I wanted to hear um, more about In My House and the things that you do and the information that you found out. So at this time, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. All right, thank you. Um, I'll I'll, uh, bring in what It's My House is all about. Uh, I'll introduce uh, the topic of uh, why It's My House was formed. Um, basically, with uh, I guess I'm going to ask you some few questions. I mean, you can answer them or somebody can call in and see if they can answer them. A brief, I would say, contemporary history lesson. Well, now maybe not so contemporary. It, it, it stretches from now to maybe 100 years ago in this country. But anyway. Um <clears throat> the first question is uh name someone name someone uh preferably that we all would generally know in the population particularly in the black community uh that was lynched What names come to mind? Uh Emmett Till for me. Okay, Emmett Emmett Till, all right, good one. Now, second question. Why do you think he was lynched? I have to say hatred and ignorance. Well, yeah, that that's that's part of it. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you twenty percent on that. When <clears throat> there's a there's a bigger picture which I'm I'm lead up to, but good okay. answer so far. All right, let uh, me go back. Next, let me go back to this yeah. right quick. The reason I said I should have said ignorance and hate because what you don't know uh, makes you afraid. And a lot True. of times what you're afraid of, you hate it. So since you True. don't know... And, and hate, hate and ignorance were involved in, in, in what, I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm eventually drive to. But, I mean, you're on the right track. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Next question. Name a high-profile black American who is, who's been assassinated here in the United States. Martin Luther King. All right. Good answer. Next question. Why was he assassinated? Uh, again, I'm going to say ignorance and hate. Okay. Um, now the next question is this, question five, and then I'll, I'll get into uh, the topic. Um, what happened in the community after Martin Luther King was assassinated and Emmett Till? Well, I would think it would bring a people closer together and uh, it would cause more people to make sacrifices. Now, that's just my thought. Okay. Um, and, And people did that. But let's use the Martin Luther King assassination. That happened in 1968. What happened in various cities after his assassination? Well, now, many different things I I think happened. I think um, people began to see 
uh, what they were afraid of, there was no need to be afraid of it. It was the people who uh, wanted to just live equal and just wanted to have better and have an opportunity to show that these are the things they could do. I think well, that happened me, in place. All right, let, let me approach it from another way. Let's see. In that, all right, when King was assassinated in or April 68, now, what what city were you living in at that time? Uh, I was in Jacksonville, Florida. I was home. So, I was a girl. Was a... Young what girl. What happened? Um, what happened? Did, did was there? Did anything out of the ordinary happen in Jacksonville, uh, particularly in the black community at that time, right after he was assassinated? Well, uh, in my book. Uh, a few things changed. Um, it wasn't long before integration come in. We didn't have, we didn't attend school with Caucasian children, but we mm-hmm. attended with uh, Caucasian teachers. Yeah, they okay. took, took a lot of the, uh, what they're calling African American teachers out and mm-hmm. placed somewhere else, and they brought Caucasian teachers in to teach. Okay, let me ask you this question. Right after, I mean, like, almost 24 to 48 hours after King was assassinated, did you hear about news reports um, of what was going on in other cities at that time? Now, at that time, I don't as quite... Re- as a reaction to his assassination. Okay, now, at that particular time, I don't remember because I was 10 years old when this took place. I was in okay. the fifth grade in school. Okay. And I remember my parents watching the news and my mom reading, and uh, I remember uh, them talking to other, you know, relatives in other states. But I don't right. quite remember everything. But I don't know because I, 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 now I'm looking back. It brought about what they call civil rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, means that we have equal rights to every person that's in America. The same rights that Asians have, or, or Mexicans have, or anybody else have. We have those same rights. And right. so now that's what it means to me. I can go uh, anywhere I want and spend my money. I can live right. anywhere that I choose to live as long as I can afford it. And if I move to a better community and these people are keeping the community up, now I'm able to, you know, afford the place where I live and afford to continue to keep my uh, house or home up. Now that that's just what civil rights uh meant oh, okay. to me is that I become right. a person who's able to do what I choose to do just like anyone else. All right. Let let me go go into what I was trying to steer you towards. And you like anybody can call and ask questions uh, or contribute. Now yeah, you were young, ten years old, and I was a couple of years behind you on that. In Washington D C where I grew up, as well as other urban cities what happened immediately after Martin Luther King was assassinated? There were riots. Um, people went out into the streets, looted places, um, set fire to homes, set fire to businesses, and that type of thing. That happened in uh, several cities primarily urban cities, as a, an immediate reaction to the Martin Luther King assassination. Now, <clears throat> what does that have in common with Emmett Till? And with both of these examples, what I'm about to say was not written in the history books. However, it happened because if you talk to the people in, in certain urban cities, that can remember 
uh, or get online and, and go through the archives of, of various urban cities and newspapers, you'll see what happened. Now, you you were 10 years old, so what, basically what a lot of black parents did then was they really sheltered their kids during that, that until he was in his uh, grave. I didn't go to school until he was put in the grave. My mother was a nurse at the time, so she had to go on to work. <clears throat> but here's the connection between Emmett Till and the Martin Luther King assassination, as well as um, killing of black people, uh, particularly with lynching. <clears throat> and that is, essentially, people, African Americans, and even some Jewish and Italian Americans, were lynched in this country because, now you did say hate, it wasn't so much the individual hate of the individual. What they were really going for and what happened was blacks had done very well for themselves after slavery and becoming well-to-do. We were homeowners. We had businesses and things of that nature. So... What happened was many white people, not all white people, what they would do is lynch somebody as a strategy to frighten the black population out of a particular neighborhood or it could be targeted to an individual that owned maybe 50 acres on up to 600 acres of land. And what they would do Okay, is go in and take their property okay. as a result of the lynching. Okay. So the lynching was a small thing. Huh? All of this was done. <laughs> All of this was done a while ago. And what happened well, is this. L listen to me good. L listen to mm -hmm. me this. Because although these mm -hmm. people did all of these things, all of this was in the wheel. Of God, God allowed this, and He allowed all of this for a purpose and a plan. And even today, I, I still see what God has done. We cried just like Israel did, as a black mm -hmm. people, as African Americans. We mm -hmm. cried and we moaned and we groaned, as Israel did. And guess what? As God brought Israel out, these people wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years mm -hmm. because they wanted to be free. They wanted to be free. They wanted to be free. God set them free. And when he set them free, they did not remain with him. He mm -hmm. called for Moses to come up to get the rules, the instructions for the people to live by. And while mm -hmm. Moses was gone, just like Martin Luther left, Moses was gone, and the people began to cut the food. That's what I call it. Yeah. Today, in 2013, Martin is gone. Black people, African Americans, whatever you call them, today they are cutting the food. But all of that, just like today, made history, and God had a purpose and a plan. I will give you your heart's desire. I will set you free. I will make you whole. But now once I do this, what will you do with it? See, because back during those times and before the 60s, before the 40s, before the 30s, in the 1900s, in the 1800s, African-American black people, again, whatever you call them, they're just people to me, but whatever your title you got for them, these people cried and moaned and groaned. They said they wanted better. God opened mm -hmm. the door and made ways for them to get better, and when they got an opportunity to get better, they abused it. Today... Mm -hmm. They have the opportunity that you can go to school 
And to be honest with you, you can almost go to school for free. But who takes the advantage of the opportunity? This is what gives me a daily job down in low-income housing, mm-hmm. down in what they call the ghetto. People have made poles and people have set up booths and they set up tents and they set up shops. And they open programs, and if you come in, you can get this and you can get that. But who go, goes and take advantage of the opportunity? See, we have people that we want to cry. Uh, uh, this person did me wrong because they're Caucasian. This person did me wrong because they're Spanish. This person did me wrong because of whatever. But when opportunity presents itself to us, because God has opened doors and made ways for moaning and groaning and crying people, what do we do with the opportunity? We sit back and we accuse people. This is what we do. I'm looking at it every day. Mm-hmm. Some people say the man got his foot on my neck. The man won't do this. The system doing that to me. The system, and I'll put it this way. If Martin Luther can come out, so can we. As an individual family man, Martin Luther come out. And if we anything that the human being wants to do, they can do it. Listen, I went to prison. I come out of prison with a number behind my name. Mm-hmm. When I come out, I was a believer, but I wasn't saved, sanctified, and I Holy Ghost still. So now we're not talking about a true believer that's walking up right before God and willing to bless his people. We're just talking about a person now that's mm-hmm. walking daily in the natural. I come out of prison with a number behind my name. I come back home a changed person. I didn't come back the way I went in. And when I come back, I wasn't able to just, when I, I worked for a company called Mac Papers, and when I left Mac Papers, I wasn't just able to just run out and get a job working on the toll booth or a bank teller or any of these things, or even a telephone operator. I, I may have been qualified because I'm easy to train. But because mm-hmm. of the number behind my name, I wasn't just able to go do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I did not sit back and accuse anybody for my trip to prison. Mm-hmm. Sit back and say, well, this all they left me is kiting, because that was my crime. They had to invent a charge for the crime that I committed. Mm-hmm. I didn't sit back and say, well, now, see, if they wasn't so prejudiced, I could get a job. No, sir. This is what I told myself. Nobody invited you up to Lower Florida to prison. Nobody sent you an invitation to come. You imposed on these people and took yourself up there, did what it take to get you there. So now you did it to yourself. Now you got to find a way to get yourself out of this mess. You got to find a way to support your children with a number behind your name. Mm -hmm. And you cannot break the law to support them because it's going to end you back up there imposing on these people again. Mm -hmm. And if you're not invited somewhere, people can treat you any way they want to because you went there. You forced your way in on them. So I had written a book called Ten Easy Salads. I had already talked to some people in some places. Mm-hmm. And I had to create my own way of doing things to show an employer your company is not doing as well as it can do because I'm not employed here. This is what I had to do for myself. In the ending of all of this, I became a human resources director. Are you listening to me? I mm-hmm. became a woman who could cut checks for a company who had a lot of money. No embezzlement, no stealing, none of that. I made a choice. 
by now I've learned more about God and I'm a praying woman now. So I allow God to bless me, and when he blessed me, I didn't forget what I cried and moaned and groaned about. I walked upright as an upright standard citizen in the United States of America. I had no intent to commit any other crime. Mm -hmm. I only had intent to walk upright and to show my fellow Friends and, and men and women who lived in the world with me, I was a woman who could be trusted with anything. Now, I can't tell you it was easy because it was not, but I was determined, and my determination caused me to be blessed. Now, later on, I became saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost sealed. Mm -hmm. But during these times, it, it, it was my thing, and I did what I wanted to do. And, and, and during these times, I taught my children education was the most important thing in life. You was not going to school for a fashion show. You was not going to school to hell raise. If someone said something to you that you disagreed with, and you said something back and you saw where it was going to go into the wrong direction, you shut up and walked away if you could. You went and got somebody in authority and shared this with them. And, and when you come home, you shared it, shared it with me. I'm an adult. I can fight your battle. Mm -hmm. I, my children. But see, we don't train. Look, we moaned and we groaned and we cried. We was out in the wilderness like Israel. I'm telling you now. God has delivered us to freedom. But we don't remember the wilderness experience. We don't take the time to teach our children. We let 13 and 12 years old have babies because they see other girls with babies. We don't curfew our children when the lights come on you in the house. In 2013, your every move, I'm going to know about it. See, we don't do any of this. We don't teach our children to get an education, how you dress and look and all of this stuff. If they're doing it on TV, it's the trend, well, go ahead and have the snakes growing out your head. If it's the trend on TV, go ahead and let your pants sag so the world can see your underwear. If it's the trend on TV, you can talk and say any old thing. If it's the trend on TV and you're a bad young one who don't deserve it, I'm going to go ahead and buy you an expensive cell phone. Mm -hmm. You don't deserve it. You don't do homework. You don't bring good grades. Every time I turn around, you're in after-school punishment, but I'm going to go ahead and buy you a $150 pair of sneakers. We don't stop them. We don't say what we mean and mean what we say, but yet we was out in the wilderness moaning and groaning. God brought us out, and we made the choice to still act like we're in the wilderness wandering around, and we don't live up to what we ask God to do. If you set me free, I'm going to remain free. If you set me free, I'm going to become a good American citizen. We don't do this. And then we want to point the finger at everybody else for what we are not doing. Yeah. We, we can blame it on they wanted our property. We can blame it on every time we invent something, they take it. We can blame it on anything we want, but we got to look at us and see what we are doing individually. Who am I and what am I bringing to the table? Oh, they right. put me in prison. Why? You rob somebody? Why? You kill somebody? Why? You was dope selling? Why? You went? Nobody framed you. Now, there are those who have been framed, but it's, it's, it's many, many, many more who wasn't framed. They are guilty as charged. But what they want to do is accuse everybody else for their wrong choices, for the choice that you made. I teach young men, listen, one day you may want to run for governor. You may want, want to run for mayor. And if you're out here committing crimes, you won't be able to run for nothing but keep running from the police. 
I roll up on them and I ask them, hey, y'all voting? Did y'all vote how old are you? I'm 18, I'm 19. Well, where are your voters' registration card? And then when they come to me with the foolishness, the man got his foot on their neck, I tell them this. You took both of your own feet and covered your eyes, suffocating yourself because you covered your nose and your mouth. You killing your own self. And how can you see what the man doing if you done blinded yourself? You can't see. Oh, I have something for the foolishness. Because this country wants to remain with prejudice. This country wants to remain with every race of people separated. But God bless America that we can all come together because he's no respect of persons. And God is not black, he's not white, he's not Spanish, he's not Asian. He's a spirit. And when his spirit comes in us, when we allow him to let his spirit dwell in us, we're not African Americans, we're just people, the people of God, serving God in love. Serving his people in love. Doing what he say in hopes that he's pleased. But people come with all this stuff and don't remember the wilderness experience. They come with all this stuff trying to figure things out with our God. Without him, we can do nothing and we won't do nothing. I'm telling you now, he must lead and guide you into all truth. You'll be a better person. That's true. And, and this is where we got to get and we got to come up out of the excuse making and we got to come up out of looking at other people. They made a slogan that said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? And that's something to consider and think about every day. And ask yourself, it's not what people can do for me, but what can I do for people? They taught me this in a business course. When you get ready to write your proposal, what's so different about your business that's not different about other people's business? That's the course they had me to, I mean, the things they had me to look at. Right. So it gave me an opportunity to search my work and the things I wanted to present to people. I ended up in a place called Fairbanks, Alaska. And when I got there, nobody was cooking home-style southern country cooking. Mm -hmm. Now ask me what's so different about the casseroles I served. Ask me what's so different about my business, biscuits, that this lady over here at the restaurant, they have biscuits. What's the difference? I made my biscuits from scratch. My biscuits are light and fluffy, and they have no preservatives or additives in them. I made them myself with my own hands. I know what's in this biscuit. I know what's in this red beans and rice. I know what's in this gumbo. You see? In the last... I sold home-style southern country food in, in the cold. And a restaurant was buying the food from me and selling it out of their restaurant. Do you remember that, Shante? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my daughter got mad. Well, Mama, why would you do that? Let them use, hey, they paid me what I wanted. Do what you want with the food. All I want is my pay for my work. Right. And the money I spent to buy the product to cook. So you see, we got to come up in our own selves and stop making excuses and stop putting the blame. And we all know that these people uh, brought us here from somewhere. We all know that we went through slavery. We didn't have shoes. We worked the cotton field. They slaughtered in the teal. They killed Martin Luther King. They even killed the boy Malcolm X. Uh, 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 these are not the only people. We know that the SCLC or whoever these people call in their name, Dr. Askew or whatever his name is over there, we know that these people said they fought for years to get the right. They fought for years for this and that. Hard work. Martin Luther lost his life. Left his wife and children back here by themselves to bring us to the promised land. And when we get to the promised land, what do we do? We show signs that we really don't deserve to be in the promised land. I'm honest with mine. Because mm -hmm. you have moaned and groaned and screamed and wallowed and hollered, and I found a herd and brought you to 
a place you said you wanted to be. And once you get here, all you can do is walk up and down the street with burgundy hair, blonde hair, blue hair, purple hair. All you can do is get your body all tattooed. All you can do is call the women in your race of people hoes and all bees. And, come on now. And the music that you listen to is not motivational. The, the motivate that this music has is to go out and rob and kill somebody, to mistreat women. But you were, your parents, your foreparents, was in the wilderness crying to come out. God heard them and delivered them. And this right. thing here. You, you see what I'm saying? So I, I just don't look at one thing or one area, hopefully, of something. I try to see what they call the big picture. And I always here, here. try to go back in history and see what happened that brought you to where we are. And, and, and when I say where we are, I don't mean a race of people. I mean everybody. What brought corporate America about? What made people build these big, high-rise, tall buildings? What was wrong with dirt roads? There's many different things. Why didn't uh, uh, Mr. Ford keep the car with the crankshaft, Brother Louis? Why he kept it? that we had to start the car with a crank. Now go back and look at things and come up and then evaluate it from there. Because of this, if not, you will find yourself stagnated in one area. Right. You don't see the whole thing, it will cause you to hate a people that don't really deserve to be hated. But if you are on top and I'm on the bottom, I don't want to hate you. I want to ease to you and find out what got you on top, how you got here, yeah. what I need to do to get here. I'm not going to come hating you, because if I hate you, I'm going to be against you, and I'm going to show it to you. You won't teach me nothing. Right. But if I come with you and ask you to teach me, then you can teach me what to do so that I can be on top. Now, they say that the Caucasian people are still prejudiced and, and this, that, and the other. But I found in many cases, once you get with them and you're learning to do things the way that they do things, you come up like they come up. They don't hold you back. What they will hold back is ignorance. They will hold that back because you're not going to come in my business and do things half done. You're not going to treat my customers like a fool, I'm not, I can't tolerate that. When you serve my, in my restaurant, you're not going to say, uh, uh, welcome to Boontang, and uh, how can I help you? Well, no, we don't serve that. You're not going to talk to my customers like a fool. So, therefore, I can't deal with you. You're not ready. You're unlearned. But the day that you become educated, the day that you've learned that business is important, this is my livelihood. This is what takes care of my family. This is my reputation. My name is on this. The day that you learn that and you learn that you want to help me maintain my reputation and your reputation and, and make a good plug-in for your race, if you're in the race, then come on over here. I will hire you right now. Right. You're not worth 20 grand. You're not worth... 19, you're not worth 16, but I see right here you're worth $60,000, $100,000 a year. I'm going to pay you what you're worth. But in coming in, I've had some bad experiences. So you got to thin and prove yourself so that I can know you're what I need. Because I can't give you $100,000 for foolishness and acting a fool. But I can give you $100,000 to give my company and my reputation what it needs. Mm -hmm. You see? And I, I've learned this over the years. My daughter even has helped me to understand some things because she's in that corporate working world. And now she's African-American. She's not light-skinned. Light she's a dark-skinned young lady. And she do an excellent job. And 
her evaluation on the job said so. But she learned, got with them and learned what it takes to make the business grow so that I can make my money and I can take care of my mama. I can do this. I can do what I want to do. Right. But we want to remain <laughs> ignorant and think somebody won't ignorant. Nobody wants ignorant but ignorant people. Nobody right. appreciate that but ignorant people. We got to be a people that become learned, become educated. And for me, education is this book sense, common sense, street sense, and being saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost fear. Now, that's their education for Barbara. Mm-hmm. Because common sense mm-hmm. tell me things that book sense won't. And to a degree, book sense will have me second guessing myself. But at the same time, some book sense makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I need that balance. I really do. I need the whole balance. In the church, I need balance. I can't be so holy until I'm no earthly good. Right. You see, if I come out the church and come out here in the street, Jesus, 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 Jesus who going to listen? <laughs> hey, Louis, who going to listen to that? If they mm-hmm. say they'll be like, okay, I'm going to need to get on away from her because uh, she'll few slices short of the loaf. But if I come out and I see you in the street and I can talk with common sense and, and, and I can talk on your level, you you talking about your house payment and I'm talking about your house payment with you. Now, if opportunity presents itself, because I, I try not to leave God out of nothing, he's my all in all. And I see where you're a man or woman of faith and and you'll give it a try. I say, well, have you prayed about this? Well, no, I don't really pray. I don't really go to church. I said, well, would you mind if I pray about it? They'll be like, no, no, please, please, I need to pray. I just, I, I hadn't thought about that because I, 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 I'm not into that, you know. But I, I, I believe I could pray, and I'm going to mm-hmm. that. And then we'll turn it right back to the house payment. Now, what you going to do uh, <laughs> about my house payment? You done got Jesus out in prayer now, but my house payment still needs to be paid. So right. either I can refer them to a company, a program that's paying house payments, or I can do what I can to help them, or I myself can call the mortgage company and talk to the mortgage company for these people. And most times when I ask the mortgage company, how long, you know, before foreclosure, they may say two months. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, can you give us two months to come up with the money? They say, you got it, lady. And I will work with them to catch up all their back money. One time I needed 20 grand. You see? But it's us working. It's us doing what's right. And it's how we treat people, and it's what's in your heart and in your mind. But if you're going to be selfish and you're going to still wander around in the wilderness, you're just going to remain lost. We've got to open up and stop looking at people and accusing. Because I'm going to ask myself, it's not what I can do for me, but what can I do for others? Mm-hmm. And what am I doing about education? What am I learning? I'm in a whole big world. And I'm going to just let my mind be stagnated, stand still in one area? I don't think so. It's too much in here to learn. It's too much in here to do. I was talking to a lady in management the other day. She said she can't leave Jacksonville. You're educated. You're, you're supposed to be, and you're in management, and you mean to tell me you're scared to leave and go to another state? This is United States of America. It's basically the same in every state. We speak English. We have a mayor's office, a city council office, or something like that. We got a driver's license plate. It, it's, it may be different, but it's the same. Right. But when you don't want to make change and when you don't want to uh, 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 renew your mind, it, see, because he even said renewing of your mind. We have to refresh. Right. People tell, oh, Barbara, when you get 80, you still going to be 20. No, I won't. I'm going to be 80, but I'm not going to be an old 80. I'm not going to be a stagnated 80 who can't take 
new things. I'm not going to be an aid that hold young people back from the truth. I'm going to be an aid that will still walk up to you and say, boy, pull them pants up. What's wrong with you? Where your mama? I'm going to still be just like that. Because, see, in our culture, we need this. And working in low-income housing, sometimes I walk up. I, I was at the door teasing with a young man last night. He heard me say something, and he was coming to purchase something from me. And when he heard me say it, he just started laughing. And then the, and he got what he wanted. I was still talking to other kids. And when he got ready to leave the door, I said something else. He walked away from the door laughing. Because they understand, believe it or not, but we don't take time to show them any attention. We shun them, taboo them, and act like they, they, they're just untrainable, unlearnable. You feel like that because you unlearnable and you untrainable. And mm-hmm. you set in your ways. We've got to come out of this foolishness. If you want to live a long time, begin to learn things. Begin to mm-hmm. try new things, experience. I said I don't eat Mexican food. I didn't like it. I tried that Mexican food, and if I know a woman over there cooking authentic, I'll break in her kitchen because we got to try new things. You don't know what your fit is if you're not trying things. Right. And this is what we got to get. But I just can't take the prejudice route, and I just can't be a prejudiced woman because God is love, and he's of every culture because he made it. He made every nationality. And he didn't make it because he loved this one over here. He he sent Peter down to Joppa to fix it all for us so that we can know he lived in the Gentile as well as the Jew. Right. So we just got to come together in reason and uh, understand some things. It's 817, and I wanted to talk a little bit about patience and uh the new age, I, I wanted to talk about that. But listen, give them your website or how they can contact you for uh, in It's My House because okay, someone I'll, else I'll may quickly, want to talk to you. And, yeah, I'll, give, I'll quickly give a phone number. It's something that you, you pointed out, education, and that's where I was going with the It's My House thing with those examples. Basically, if, a, if people that are listening, if you own a home, on a property, what is happening nationwide, and it's very rampant, is we know about civil rights, but what the typical homeowner doesn't know about are property rights. And that's what we make people aware of, what are your private property rights? Because believe it or not, there um, every day in this country, there are people that are stealing homes from people. That might sound like a strange concept to people. But people are actually stealing homes, and it causes a lot of legal damage. So um, even uh, one example is I know of a lady. One night somebody knocked on the door, a process server, went an eviction notice. Now, this lady had paid off the house, lived in the house, but somebody had uh, knocked up some papers got a loan against the house for $300,000. And it cost her $10,000 to get out of that, that that particular trouble. But some people are not that fortunate. So you're right. Education is a very important key. So that's what It's My House is about, is making people aware on how you can protect your property as well as keep. Now, I'm talking about actually keep it because, like I said, we're in an age where people, they know how – it's actually easier to steal a house than it is to steal a piece of cheese. Wow. As crazy as that might sound. Is that, so anybody who might be interested in learning more about that, you can give me a call at uh, 202-280-5153. And my name's L.A. Davis. All right, you got it, Mr. L.A. Davis. And uh, he gave the phone number out of 202 202- Two eight zero five one five three, I believe. And yeah, five one five three. Wait, say that again, L.A.? Yeah, yeah, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, two zero two two eight zero five one five three. Call anytime, and you know that we're like so we're. It's my house is about 
once you have that house, once you own that land, okay, this is what you need to do to educate yourself because you brought up a very good point. You know, just by buying it and paying the note, uh, and some people, a lot of people, their homes are paid off, but there are a group of people, and it's not based on color, race, or anything like that. It's a group of ignorant and greedy people that have been going around for decades essentially targeting senior citizens or targeting people who had their homes paid off and actually stealing those houses by fraud. Uh, and, you know, some people, some homeowners, and the, the way the legal system is, you have to educate yourself on that. So that's what we do at It's My House. We make, make people basically aware of what the landscape is and how to protect yourself. And then, I mean, particularly if you have a family, you know, how you can educate your children on how to keep that house in the family. So, you know, it's like says one thing in getting it, but what are your private property rights to actually keep that property so somebody will not steal it by identity fraud or what have you? It's over 20 ways in which people do this. So that's what we talk about. Okay. That's a wonderful thing right there. Private property rights. I'm, I'm placing it over on Facebook as well because I know this now. I know of people, and these, some of these are pastors and preachers and bishops now. Listen to me good. Once a person becomes elderly, their homes are paid off and all this kind of thing, and they pay their property taxes on time. Right. And the the preachers see that these people are elderly and they don't have any children or any family members. They go in and on a fake note treat the people they old, they elderly, they remember when the pastor was this way and that. And right. they treat these people as if they have their best interests at heart. But all they have at heart is getting their house and their property. Are you listening now, to see, me? That's... So now, I know the same there is truth to that's what you're saying. Out-back. I know there is truth to what you're saying. And even people redoing paperwork and all this kind of thing, and they treat elderly people into signing stuff and all of this. So you want to set your bread in stone for the sake of your children. If you're right. a property owner, homeowner, you want to do this. Yeah. And so, what, what you just described is rampant. It's called house jacking. Most people haven't ter- heard of the term house jacking, but think about carjacking. It's the exact same thing, except ah. it's happening to a house. Okay. But okay. You put out a very good example. It's, uh, it's rampant. Uh-huh. And that, that gave birth to It's My House. Okay. On how you basically can educate yourself to keep that property sold. Because you're right, it could be a pastor, it could be a relative, it could, or it could be somebody you don't even know. But you got to keep it, you got to get yourself educated on how to protect that property. Yes, because I had a a friend. We grew up in the same church, and he became a bishop. And when I come out of Alaska, I ran into him, and boy, he was excited. And so we hung out for many months. And he ended up in jail, then he got out of jail, and then he he saw me and he told me about this house he had got, and he explained all of this to me. I didn't agree with it. And he told me that the lady had died and left him the house. And I'm thinking, uh, just a few days ago, you didn't have nowhere to live, basically, and now you got a whole home. But what was not really known is the lady had a niece. Uh-huh. He's come to town and put a stop to all of the foolishness. And then there's another well-known pastor here that this bishop told me that the pastor taught him how to do this. I was like, what the what? You going around taking people's house? Because, see, yep. even if the house has to go back to the state, you let it go back to where it go back to. If you come in to help this elderly person... You're not helping them to take nothing from them. You're not helping them. I'm going to put your name on my deeds. No, ma'am. You, you, you can leave it like it is and, and let the state have it, the city have it, or whoever want it. 
But my purpose for coming over here is not to get your house because I, I got plans for my own retirement home. Right. And there's not no house in the city limits. And I'm not coming back into my, my property and I'm going to rent this and I'm going to sell this. That's not what God called me to. And I don't want nothing like that. I don't want to get things that way. Well, baby, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you all my money. No, you're not leaving me all your money. I'm not that kind of a girl. My dad passed away. And he wanted the house to go to the church. Mm-hmm. People telling me and my brothers, I have two brothers, oh, y'all can put a stop to that. Why y'all going to let them have, get, let me let me say this to you. We did not work and pay for this home. My dad did. This was his dying wish. And if this is what he wanted, he had his purpose for giving that house to the church. Y'all hear me? He was a man who knew what he was doing. And my brothers and I, we agreed. And when he passed away, we agreed not to go down to his house pulling stuff out and going through stuff. He gave his stuff to the church. He gave us what he wanted us to have. But the main thing I look back on my dad for giving me is Jesus. He led me to the Lord. Woo! That's the greatest gift he could have gave me. See, because, look, the house going to pass. The money going to be spent. But as long as I live and even when I die, I still got Jesus. All y'all don't understand this morning. Because I'm not after stuff and things. That don't, that don't add up for me. I'm passing through here. This is not my home. I'm not going to remain in the earth. No, 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 no. He went away to prepare a place for me. And I want to see what it looks like. Ha! I want to see the streets of gold. I want the mansion just over the here. This is no talk and this is no joke. This is for real. This is my purpose. This is my heart's desire is to go back with Jesus when he comes. My heart's desire is to judge the world. Hallelujah. Nothing about no house and no car and and all of this stuff taken from people. I don't like that. You can't sign, just sign a car over to me. Now, if you come and you tell me, well, I, this was laid on my heart, I can understand that and I won't stop your blessing. But me going around doing stuff so I can get stuff from people, that's not my, that's not my way. I'm able-bodied, baby. I work. I can make a bed up. I know how to wash clothes. My mama worked for a laundry. I can bake a biscuit. This is my job. This was a contract with God when Eve went over there and ate the unforbidden fruit. That was a sentence and a contract that came down. She was the bad children and take care of the house. I know it's our thing and we do what we want to do. I know it's our thing, and we want careers, and we want, but God called you to a contract. And if you can't cook, if you can't clean, if you can't wash clothes, I'm going to need you to go to the altar because you're out of the contract. These are the things that women do. We keep things organized. We keep things clean. We live a certain lifestyle. We look pretty. We, we smell good. These are the things women do. I'm not out digging no ditch, and I'm not going to drive no garbage truck. I'm not going to drive no tractor trailer. That's too heavy for me. I need the man to go home and drive your truck, buddy, and go home and dig a ditch. I'm going to go right in here and cook these biscuits, all right? And I'm going to scrub that bathroom real good. When you come home, you can see yourself in the floor. I know how to iron the clothes. That's my job. That's the contract. See, we, we get out the contract because of what our flesh wants. I seen Geraldine doing it over there, and it looked good that she a professor at the college. She called me the professor at that no college. Calls me to get in, them kitchen, in that kitchen and wrestle them pot. Calls me to sit down and be safe. Called me out the world into my home. 
so that I'm not abused, that I'm not raped, I'm not robbed. Because he's going to lead and guide me where I need to go. That's what he called me to. And he didn't call me, key, 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 being in every man's face, he didn't call me to that. How you doing? I'm blessed. How you doing? And I'm keep going. See, there's a way for us, but we don't want the right way. Because the right way don't appear to be exciting to us. That's because we don't really know God. I know sitting down, I'm being kept. I'm saved. My eyes not black. Nobody robbed me last night because I was trying to come out the club. I don't have AIDS. I'm healthy. I ain't been bad hopping from man to man. He do things and put things in his word to keep us safe, but we don't want that. And we don't have patience for nothing. This is why they came up, they come up, rather, with the microwave, push button this, click that, remote controls. Because we want everything fast and we don't want to do no hard labor. We want everything to be easy. And this is why a lot of us are overweight, because we don't do nothing. They invented a name, couch potato. I'm nobody potato, and I'm not laid out on no couch. But I'm up and out doing what I can do. I'm a thick, thick gal because I eat them thick, thick groceries. <laughs> and I got to cut back on the grocery eating. But if you cook it right and you eating your own cooking and sampling, you're going to have some meat on your bones. But I'm not so out of shape I can't just do nothing. That's ridiculous. So y'all check Mr. L.A. Davis out over there in my house and get some information and pass it on to your relatives. Pass it on to your friends. Y'all lock your property down, lock your house down. They got a house jackers out here. As he said, just like carjackers, he's telling you the truth. They have house jackers, and they will take your house and your property under false pretenses. And our court system will bear record with them, will we'll, we'll bear witness with them because they don't trick your family member. That's right. Aside from some documents somewhere. Go ahead, L.A. No, you are right, uh, Minister. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. We have to keep ourselves educated. <clears throat> we have to educate uh, our family members, uh, particularly, you know, with your legacy. Uh, and you're right. If you don't know, you'll get got. Um, so you're absolutely right. Yes. And I thank you so much for coming this morning, and uh, I thank you for sharing with us. And that I know he's got some valuable information that will help you. And uh, you may want to contact him and uh, get that information from him. Again, the number is 202-280-5153. And uh, call, give him a call. And even if it's just to be nosy, what you talking about? What you got over there? If it's just for that purpose, give him a call and let him know you heard him this morning and you want to see what information he could give you and uh, what questions he may want to ask you or something like that. And uh, support him, support him. He's, he's really trying to educate folks on private property and your private home. So give him a call. Good morning, Prophetess Duke. God bless you, baby. <laughs> God bless you. I thought about you yesterday and just, uh, just had me a good laugh, Prophetess. I say, Lord, this woman here, is just going to come and bless me any way that she can. And I was just truly blessed by your encouraging words, sister. I really was. And a good morning to your brother D in the house. Hey, Brother Lewis, Brother D told me to tell you last night, hello, and he misses in the chat room, but uh, he's moving. And so his computer and everything has been disconnected in the move. But he missed us, and he wanted us to know he had not abandoned us. So I want to give you that message as well. And a good morning to your sister Yvette. God bless you, baby. God bless you this morning. We thank God for you tuning in. So listen, we didn't get a chance to 
uh, go over to patience and and the new age. But I really wanted to um, hear what uh, L.A.'s Davis had to say, and uh, I'm glad I did, and I enjoyed it myself. And uh, it took me back in my mind uh, when I was 10 years old in the fifth grade, and my teacher was named Mrs. Weatherby, and she was my fifth grade teacher, and her husband was Coach Weatherby. He was a coach at the high school. And these were people who did not play, and they would treat you like they were your parents. And I remember one day I tried to go off and clown, and that Miss Weatherby just straightened me right out, didn't call my parents, didn't threaten me to call my parents because she did what she had to do. And she knew after that she was never going to have any more problems out of me. And she wore cologne. They called her cologne taboo. Anybody remember the cologne taboo? And it was new back then, and that thing smelled nice. And one day I said, Miss Weatherby, what's that you got on? She said, it's called taboo. Uh huh. <laughs> I said, well, it smells so nice every day. She said, you like smelling it when you come in? I said, yeah. She said, well, that's good hygiene. We must always keep our hygiene up. You know, she would teach, you know, from, from that. Had another teacher. Her name was Miss Ward. And this lady had the most beautiful complexion. I mean, flawless. No makeup, just flawless. But like if you touched her skin, it would burst. It was so pretty, and uh, her hair was always intact, and uh, she didn't play the radio either, and she jacked me up one day several times. She would jack me up in the hallway clowning, and so I remember this. I remember the Martin Luther King speech, and, uh, you know, we don't call him King. We call him Kang, so don't, don't, don't get all excited now. I remember the speech. I remember uh, the JFK uh, assassination, and... President Johnson, I was back during those times. Yeah, I was a little girl, but I remember quite a bit from back there. And uh, I remember the segregation and all of that. But I even thank God for the segregation because it got me to know my own community and the people that I lived in the community with. And um, my parents, they didn't teach color. They didn't really teach us that. They taught us behave. Behave yourself, and there's a way to carry yourself, and don't be a liar. They taught these kind of things to my brothers, and I had one sister that passed away. And so this is what we got, you know, out of that era. And my parents worked hard, and they worked at home a lot. And my dad, he was the one who worked outside of the home, and he worked for a company called, we went by there yesterday, Ivy Steel and Wire. He, he retired from there, come out of retirement, and he worked for a funeral home that was called Gittin Griffin. I mean, uh, Gittin Griffin, I'm sorry. And then he retired from there. So I remember a lot of things uh, back during those times. And for me, a lot of things wasn't bad things. But for me, I have a lot of good memories. And uh, I thank God for them. I don't consider myself an abused child. Uh, I consider myself of coming up in a household that was full of love. And I just thank God today that my mind is not warped to a certain degree or twisted. Yeah. So, all right. God bless you, L.A. God bless you. And I thank you so much again for for coming. That really blessed me this morning. And I enjoyed going back. And so I'm grateful today unto the Lord. We uh, still have some time, so the studio is open. Uh, if anyone want to press that number one and come in, I was looking for Brother Ron around these corridors because he should be somewhere around here on his way to work and everything like that. I don't know if he got to listen in this morning or not, but usually he's around here somewhere. And I know Brother Frank in the house today is... Sister Gwen over there. I'm calling you today, Sister Gwen. Uh-uh, nothing will keep me from it. Nothing but death will keep me from it today. Yeah, I got to give you a call. And uh, I let a lady come in last night, and uh, she took a look, and uh, she took some things, and even her sister uh, could use some things. 
and th- these are not people who will just take stuff because they can take it. And she didn't take a lot, but she took what she felt she needed. And uh, she was able to take what she needed, and she gave her testimony about how she had started a new job. And they give free coffee, tea, and hot chocolate. But if you don't have a thermos to put it in or some, a cup with a, a lid on it, you can't have it in the lab. And so she gave that testimony. She said, I said, when th- this is like her, I think her fifth, fourth day on the job. And she said, she said to herself, Sister Gwen, when I get paid, I'm going to buy me a cup. But when she looked in the box last night, there was a brand new cup in the plastic in the box for her. You understand what I'm saying? God have a purpose and a plan. And my daughter and I, we were so happy. We were so happy she could get that. And uh, she picked out a few other things. Wasn't greedy, wasn't greedy but she picked out a few other things that she needed, and uh, she took it on. And I want to say this to you, Sister Gwen, those are things of quality, very nice, very nice things. And those dishes, Sister, I don't want to be greedy, but I was so tempted, and I'm so tempted to keep those dishes with those scriptures on them and (laughs) and everything. But I know it would make someone a nice gift. Oh, but such wonderful gifts in the boxes. And she sent that stuff to me you, from the UPS store. They, they packaged everything and sent it on to me so that I'll be able to give it out to these people for Christmas. Hold on, Sister Gwen, don't move, don't move. Good morning, Brother Frank. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful. How are you this morning? I'm blessed, can't complain. <laughs> yes, I'm blessed and highly favored. I was just sitting and listening mostly this morning. I just want to say good morning. And the way you're sounding like Christmas come early for you, <laughs> it is all good. <laughs> and that's wonderful. But most of all, I was listening to the gentleman this morning concerning about people's homes get taken away from them. I've, se- I've seen it. I've seen mm-hmm. it happen and it, over, the, over the years past and everything. And I advise everyone who, if they're not thinking about it, if they don't own property, if they plan on owning property, give the man a call. Give him a call. Let them give you the information so that you don't be bamboozled. Because the the thing is, once something happens, getting it back right in the system, if you do not have the funds to do it, then it it goes into a point where you're done lost. Even though it's been illegal, you're still done lost. And I just thank God that he gives us avenues to go to to be able to get the resources that we need to be able to stay on top of things because that's going to be crooks out there as long as we're here. But thank God for Jesus Christ to give us the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that people can come to us and tell us what to do in a time of need to do it and prevent stuff. To prevent, have to go through it. You have to keep your eye on stuff. It's back like in the old days when the insurance man used to come to the house and take them few pennies, and then soon somebody died. It's not even enough money to buy flour, but they've been right. paying for years, thinking that they got, and they used to call it a barrier. And mm-hmm. in those days, because the old folks used to say this is the way it's supposed to go. But the thing is, it, this isn't the way it's supposed to go. This isn't the way God wanted to go, and we are all in this. And like they have no color discrimination of who they want to get. When the enemy comes, when he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he doesn't have any discrimination of who he wants. He wants, he wants all. He don't right. want some of the different kind, race, and kin. He wants all that he can get, and then some. And yes. and it wasn't made. His hell was made for him, and he want to take everybody with him. He can't. It's like a party. When you give a party, and you can't find nobody. You go out on the street, say, "Hey, look, I'm giving a party." All the goodies is at my house. Come on, please come into my house and enjoy this here for you. Because the price is good, but the thing about it is the results is bad. And it really comes to be that. Like uh, I was saying the other day, and I ain't going to be on here this long, but the other day, that whatever you say on the porch, you must keep it once you get in the house. Because if you don't, then you're going to be out the back door. So meaning in that, get the wisdom, get the knowledge, get the understanding, get common sense and mother wit 
and education, all these things go together. And over the years, I've learned that you put it all together, but when you have Jesus as your partner with the Holy Spirit right there with you, you can't go wrong. And like you said, the best thing could have been given to you by your father was to know Jesus Christ. And that's what my mother, godmother, and everybody gave me because I, my godmother died and left a fortune for me. But I would guess I, it wasn't meant for me to have it then because I didn't want the fortune. I wanted my godmother. Wow. But the, the other people got it. But God showed me that whatever I have for you, you're going to get it no matter what before you leave out of here. And it might not be the way you want it, but once you receive it, it's going to be a blessing for you. And I say to everybody again, ask God to increase your favor with him and in man. And it's in Matthew, I think, Matthew 50, 52, about increase your, increase your stature with him, with God and man, and increase your favor with God and man and your statue in wisdom. Yeah. And when you do that and you ask God, you'll be amazed on the things that you go before people to see and understand that God is here, Jesus Christ is here, and the Holy Spirit is always, every day, all day, 24-7, giving us the right. Keep the Holy Spirit smiling. And the more he smiles, the more you show the love of Jesus Christ. You don't need nothing but God. All we need is God, and God's favor and love and understanding and guidance will get you wherever you need to go. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Uh huh. Okay. Hold on one second. God bless you, Brother Frank, a man of wisdom, a words of wisdom. Good morning. Good morning. This is Shante. Um, I just want to say God bless all the listeners and all the callers. And everybody that supports Jesus in the morning, I love this show. I love my mama, and I thank God for every one of you. Um, I especially thank God. I was telling my mom this morning, I was listening to the show, and this morning when I woke up, I heard the alarm go off. And I've been noticing this for like the last couple months. Um, I just want to tell God, thank you. I want to just acknowledge what the Lord has done for me. Every morning I wake up, I literally can hear a song in my heart. I opened up my eyes this morning, and that, now look, I don't know if everybody knows, but I cannot, I repeat, I cannot sing. But uh, I do make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and I, I'm, I'm sure the Lord appreciates my efforts. But um, this morning I woke up, and the song in my heart was, This is the day that the Lord has made, I shall rejoice and be glad. And I think Fred Hammond sings that song. Is it Fred Hammond, Mama? Yeah. And so uh, every day, so, sometimes it's the same song. But that time and that fellowship with the Lord, as soon as I wake up, I know that he's with me all day. All day, every day, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. And so I'm just grateful because the joy of the Lord truly is my strength. And so I just wanted to share that testimony. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you can't sing. You know, God appreciates the praise Amen. that we give him in our hearts, our minds, you know, the praise and song, uh, the gift, you know, whatever he's given us, we give it back to him. So, He's given me the song, and although it's off key and off pitch, I give it right back to him. So I just want to tell the Lord thank you and say God bless you to everybody out there, and um, have a blessed day. God bless you too, sister. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you. we thank God this morning, and I'm so grateful. I'm coming at you right now, Sister Gwen. Good morning. God bless you. How are you? Good morning. Glory to God in the highest. Um, I haven't really been talking because my voice is still um, fade going in and out, so I haven't been coming on the line. But um, that small box was for you. Oh, so you don't, okay. you don't have to feel you don't have to feel selfish about that because I texted you a message uh, on your on your phone, okay. and I don't know if you got it or not. But I'll I probably. let you know that that's, that those dishes was for you because oh, I know wow. you serve people and I know people come into your home. Yes. And um, the Lord has blessed me with an eye for the sales, and he blessed me to get quality for less. And um, he will have me get stuff, and I'll get it and bring it home, and 
I can have it for a year or two, a couple of months, and one day I'll be going on about my business, and the Lord will say, okay, remember this, what you bought, I had you to buy? Okay, give it to this person. Yes. And that's yes. that's what I do. That's okay. Okay, yeah, amen. I don't mind. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> Those are some I wonderful, love, nice I love gift people. Uh huh. Yes, very nice gifts of quality. Very quality yeah, and unique things too. <laughs> true, that's true. But I just didn't want to take you know from from the people you know because there are some elderly ladies in here that if they saw those dishes. I probably would have to cut their hands off, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, you do whatever the Lord tells you to do, but they are for yeah, you. Yeah, because I, I, I don't want to, you know, be selfish, and I don't want to take from someone who could use it. You okay. Know, I, I may just want it, but they really could use it. So, that, you know, I don't want to be that kind of way. But no, I thank God, Sister Gwen, I'm talking about you went out of your way. You went that well. That wasn't out of my way. God did that. I didn't do that. I just obeyed. All right. Well, we thank God. We thank God for your obedience. Uh-huh. And you rest assured that there are some people going to be blessed. Even the rent office here uh, will be blessed. Those gloves, they can use all of that. So they're going to be blessed. And um, the digital cameras, I'm just telling it all, ain't I? <laughs> uh, that was there will be some teenagers blessed with those, uh, and they are deserving. They are deserving. And so I just thank God this morning. Another lady uh, had come, and she brought me bags of clothes. And I had forgot this young lady. She's got uh, two boys, and she's expecting another one. And the two boys, they really had no clothes. But the woman brought those bags of clothes, and I was, talking to my youngest daughter, my baby, and I was telling her, I said, well, I got some little boy clothes. I want, I was thinking of my grandson, and she said, no, Mama, he don't need no clothes. She said, but this person and that, but I was like, oh, yes, they do, yes, they do. Please carry them to them. So she put all the stuff in her car, and I'm sure when she left here, she took it straight to the lady with the two boys. And so it's just a blessing because I had this one lady who told me my boys need clothes. Well, these are very nice things because people don't give me junk because I can't use no junk. And what you take into the Salvation Army, you don't want the junk no more. I'm not giving it to nobody else. I'm giving people something that I would want. And so she had come and looked at the clothes. Oh, they too big. She just made every excuse in the book. But she was expecting new stuff with tags on it because she know me. I said, okay, there's nothing wrong with these clothes. They're very nice, well-maintained, and the lady got them last night. So God, God going to bless his people one way or another. And if you turn down the blessing, that's on you. But there's somebody waiting to receive it. And so I just thank him. And I, I, I'm not giving away all I want, but guess what? God bless me this year to still be a giver in this holiday season. And as long as I'm a giver, I'm happy about that thing. What? Woo! I'm happy. So today I will go up uh, to the rent office, Sister Gwen, and carry these things up to them. And I see the expression mm -hmm. on their face because I use their center. And in the center we use gloves even in serving the snacks and stuff like that. And so the last time I went, I bought some gloves, but I didn't buy what you sent. And so now I can just stop the top cabinet, and when they go in there and get open the box and put their gloves on and do what they do over there. So Amen. I, just, I just thank God. He sends what you need. Yeah, he, he supplied need today now. Oh, yeah. And so I'm just grateful this morning unto him. And, again, I thank you so much in my house for coming. It was a wonderful uh, uh, little talk right there. I think it was. And uh, Brother Frank got in on it, and that's a wonderful thing. Y'all know I was looking, for again, for Brother Ron around the corner somewhere. But maybe either he overslept or he had to just go on into work today. But uh, we got about five minutes, so I'm going to pray us out, and then we'll go to our last song of the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evangelist Mac. Yes, ma'am. 
I have my uh, mailing address too on your phone, my PO box. Okay. So if you uh, you said you were going to send out the, a book. Yes, I have those books. Well, on so your I'll phone, your, your cell phone, I text you my um, PO box. It should be on there. Oh, let, let me get my phone. Oh, it's charged. All right, I'm gonna look in there and get it, and then I'm gonna look on the box and get it, and I'll make sure you get that thank you card that I sent out, and I'll make sure you get your book. Oh, okay. Oh, and what was the name of your book you said you wrote? It's called Ten Easy Salads. Ten Easy Salads? Yeah, it's a little cookbook. Oh, but that's been years okay. ago, Sister Gwen. Oh. Sister Barbara. Yeah, she knows. She knows. Uh huh. Wait a minute. What you say, <laughs> Brother Frank? I I receive my mail. Okay, wonderful. Yes, thank you. Yes, but uh, Brother Frank. Yes. You're going today. There's another box. A box that's coming for you. Oh my lord. <laughs> there's a box coming. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how. Did you just? God bless you again. I I, I don't know. I just keep saying it and keep saying it. And I don't, I, I, you, I don't. I don't want to hold you up. No, I no, no. Talk don't to you on the phone but in later. This, in this particular box, there's a surprise. Oh my lord! Amen. Thank you, thank you Jesus. <laughs> oh goodness! You want the eight questions? I got a Kool Aid smile on my face. <laughs> okay, that's wonderful. That's what we want to do. A smile right. on there. Yes, God sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God, God bless, bless you, Sister Gwen. Uh, don't worry. You, you, you're not forgotten. You're not forgotten, Brother Louis. You're not forgotten, Brother D. I got you. I got you now. Because I saw you sent me that address. I said, look at D. He better send it to me down the top. He better get that address on over here way before Christmas. So I got you, and uh, you'll be getting your little boxes in the mail soon with your little surprises in them and uh, everything. And we just thank God this morning. Sister Ellis, don't, don't worry about a thing. Sister Yvette. We got this on lockdown. Don't y'all worry. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to forget anyone for Christmas, those faithful listeners. And um, the Lord blessed that man to give me them books. Oh, he sent a whole big box. And oh, last night goodness. I sent one upstairs to my neighbor. Uh-huh. And, and to her mother. Yes, yes. Good morning, Prophetess Dukes. God bless you, baby. How are you? Good morning, freezing over here with all this ice. But uh, I just wanted to say good morning to everyone and uh, let everyone, all the listeners, know that you will be um, a featured guest on um, Women of Messiah. Um, I, I, you know, I had to wait for the Holy Spirit to just give me what was I supposed to name this? The editorial I was writing on you because you know I write this this editorial called Anointed Words Presents, and it was. Uh, presenting evangelist Barbara Mack, the cheerful giver. And so it's so wonderful just to hear you talking this morning and hear everyone with the love in their heart and a giving heart and Jesus right there. So I just, I, like I said yesterday, you bring people together, and I like that. I like that people have a uh, happy spirit in the morning by listening to your program. I've been listening for quite some time, and... um I just want everyone to know she will be uh, featured and she will be giving the word. I know God is going to give her a powerful word, and that will be uh, the Monday before Christmas, so it's a very good Christmas gift. She, I heard Frank when he was saying, uh, Deacon Frank, when he was saying about um, you, you sound like you already have Christmas. She is Christmas. She's a Christmas gift. <laughs> so I am just really thankful. So just... Um, know that I will be getting in touch with you with all the information. Okay, okay. And we want to announce Amen. we want to announce that every morning property is due so that people can write it down and Okay. And, all right. And well, that you, kind of thing. Know. And mm -hmm. also oh you know what? Sister Susan Harden, uh she's got that book over on iTunes. I don't know if anybody went over there to take a look or not yet. But, well, what's um, the uh, what's the correct spelling of her her last name? I wrote her name and the uh, her name down, but ha is it Harden or Harten? How do you spell Harden, it? Harden, H A R D E N. D E N. Okay, I'll go check it out today. Okay, Suzanne, and uh, she sent me one CD 
uh, with the music on. And I'm telling you, this thing will help you to sleep. Boy, look at here. Play it if you want to. You'll be Well, don't me. tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it, uh, what she said to me and everything. And a portion of the proceeds go to Freedom Doors Ministries, and she wanted to send all the money. But God had her to split it up <clears throat> and to share with someone else and, of course, to keep a portion for herself because she was trying to give it all away. Wait a minute, Suzanne. Listen to the Lord, baby. It costs money to make the CDs and things. And, uh, you know, j- just just take it easy because she's a real giver now. And uh, she loved that Freedom Doors Ministries and the work that we do. And uh, I met her over on Twitter. Beautiful sister, beautiful sister in the Lord. And uh, she'll send me a message and a prayer every day, every day. So y'all check her out, S-U-Z-A, Suzanne, H-A-R-D-E-N. And I think she's using the middle name of Davis over there. But I'm going to pray a The 